Hey everybody, it's Karen with Food and Family. It's dinner time and I'm getting ready to start my dinner. And today I think we're going to do another uncut. Uh, a lot of people enjoyed it last time. I know I certainly did. So today I'm going to have some chicken cutlets. Very simple, easy to cook, and it doesn't take long. I'm going to have some homemade mashed potatoes. I was just beginning to cut them up. And if you're not comfortable cutting in your hand like I'm doing, please do not. I don't want anyone to get cut. Now, I'm going to cut my potatoes up kind of fine. Uh, yeah, I say fine, small. They seem to cook quicker that way. And we don't want to be standing over the stove all afternoon, do we? So I'm going to get these on the stove. I've got my oven heating up. We're going to cook some asparagus. I love roasted asparagus. And I got a beautiful bunch today. I've got them sitting here and they've been washed and they're just waiting for us to get them ready. Now, I may have told you this before and I'm sure a lot of you know it. Some of you may not if you're a new cook. When you're boiling potatoes for mashed potatoes, don't start them out in hot water. Start them in cold water because what happens is that outside of the potato will start getting done before the inside does. And then you'll just end up with a big soggy pan of mashed potatoes and you don't want that. So I'm going to put a little salt in them. I know I've had questions about it. I've got food in my pot, so I'm going to go ahead and salt it. This is your chance to salt those potatoes. Potatoes love salt. So let's get this back here. What did I drop? I'm going to get this going. Now, I'm going to put a lid on it just to get it started, but we will not leave that lid. And let me put this in the sink since I dropped it in the floor and we'll get something else there we go all is not lost okay i have a chicken cutlet here i have one chicken cutlet because there's just the two of us and that's all we'll eat now i'm going to cut it in half i'm going to trim this up i've got a bag here that i'm putting the scraps in so I'm going to trim off little pieces of fat that are on here. This little bit of gristle that I see. Well, I don't know if you really call it gristle, but that's what I'm calling it. I want to trim that off. And then we're going to slice this chicken in half lengthwise. Then I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to lay it flat on my board. Let's get this piece of fat off. I don't want it. Or that skin. Let's just get rid of it too. Now, and we'll wash our hands real good after we get done with this. Okay, lay it down flat on the board. Okay. And I'm going to take my knife. Very sharp my very sharp rated knife and I'm just going to slice right through it. My hands are protected and I'm slicing that and I have got two beautiful cutlets out of that one chicken breast and that is what I wanted. Now let me get rid of this knife, give my hands a wash because we're going to season this chicken up. I'll be washing my hands a good bit. So y'all bear with me. Okay, so I am going to season. Let me get my skillet going over here. I've got my little burner there hot. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of canola oil. I'm using canola oil today, not much. That's probably tablespoon and a half maybe because y'all know me I'm going to add butter in that pan 
and that is right about a tablespoon of butter. I know, I use a lot of butter, don't I? Okay, so while we've got this, let's season this chicken. I, today, I'm going to use some lemon pepper. It's Badia, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Badia, Badia, and I'm going to use this. Boy, this stuff lasts forever. I bought it today, and it says it's best by January of 2028. That's a long time from now, ain't it? Okay, so let's turn it over. We want to season both sides. We don't need pepper. Let's see, does this have salt in it? Oh. You know, I do not see salt. Yes, it is. I'm looking in the wrong place. Yes, salt is the very first ingredient. We're not adding more salt. But I have some seasoned breadcrumbs. And we're going to use that. If I can get it open. There we go. And I'm just going to pour some out in my... It's breadcrumbs. It has parsley in it. Um... What else does it has have in it? Salt, sesame, caraway seeds, grated pecorino romano, hmm. garlic powder, spices, onion powder, oregano. Um, so it's got a lot of good stuff in it. So I think our skillet is good and hot. I'm going to, yes. That little breadcrumb went right to fry. You see that? Okay, so let's take our cutlet. We don't want a heavy breading. I don't. Now, if you want a heavier breading on yours, I can suggest to you maybe dip it in um, an egg wash or a little bit of milk and then in the breadcrumbs and if you want to double double dip and you'll have a thicker breading i just like a light coating oh and this is going to be beautiful mm, i can smell that seasoning that lemon pepper oh it smells so good i'm glad i decided to use that i'm trying to do this without getting my hands back in that chicken Mm. All right, let's put this one in there. Now, we're going to watch this close. We're done with this. No more. You see, I use a plastic board for my chicken. Do not put chicken on your wooden board. I know I've had people tell me it doesn't matter, but it does to me. Now, I'm going to get something to put that chicken in. When it comes up because it won't take it really it won't take it long to cook so let's get our asparagus ready and i think i've showed you this before leave the rubber bands on now let's take and it's isn't that the prettiest asparagus i like the little skinny asparagus hold it by both ends bend it and where it breaks is where you need to cut it because that's going to be tough. You can save that to make vegetable stock out of if you'd like. That would be wonderful, but I don't want it. I don't want to use it today. Let's see. I need a knife. Here we go. And I'm going to cut it right along that line where that was. And there we go. See, I left my rubber band on and it's all bundled up. And I don't have to chase it around. And we're going to put it out on our baking sheet. It's so pretty. That one looked a little, little tough. I'm going to turn this eye down. Because I don't want this chicken browning too quickly. Okay, so back to our asparagus. I'm going to 
salt and pepper it. You know, and that lemon pepper would be good on it, wouldn't it? I know I just put a little salt, but why don't we sprinkle a little bit of this on it? It won't hurt. We won't use a whole lot. And we're going to just drizzle that olive oil on it. And let's zhuzh it around. Y'all know what zhuzhing is, don't you? All right, we got to spread out. I'm going to wash my hands again. Get some of that oil off of it. So I'm going to get everything in my kitchen oily. Okay, so I'm going to hold off on putting this in the oven because it won't take long, but it's ready. It's ready to go. See, this supper is coming together so quickly, and we've been cooking. We've been getting ready, talking a lot for just over 10 minutes. Looky there. Isn't that beautiful? Let's turn that over. Oh, I wish I had a lemon. That would be so good to squeeze on there. What if we just put some regular lemon juice? I've got some. It's um, refrigerated, but you know what? It's lemon juice. It is lemon juice. I've got my sweet tea in the refrigerator. Water and lemon juice. What more can you ask for? What else can we do? Yeah, let's talk about our event we had Sunday. We had a Sunday dinner, and it was based on diner-style food. And we had it at Chubb Father's Restaurant in Alabaster. And if you're not from around here, I, I'm, I know you probably won't know what I, where I'm talking about, but uh, Chubb Fathers is owned by Will Chilowinski, and he is one of the hosts on Breaking Bread 99.5 in Birmingham, and the program comes on from 6 to 7, Monday through Friday, and I go on that radio station with them uh, every few weeks and talk about food and family and different dishes and uh, whatever we call the beef is that day. And But Sunday, we had so much fun. We sold 50 tickets and that was just fans and subscribers of mine and different ones that were there that came. I got to meet a few of my subscribers, and that was so much fun. Um, we had Corrine with Board in Birmingham. She did a charcuterie, and it was just absolutely beautiful. Y'all, I put out some pictures um, yesterday, and if you want to go back and look at it, the video is called Breaking Bread with the Host. And Board in Birmingham, Corrine was there, Jake from Jake's Soul Food. He has a cafe here. He provided cornbread. And Will, Chubb Father, provided the meats and the vegetables. Our choices were smoked meatloaf, and it was fabulous. And fried chicken and grilled or fried fish. Our vegetables were collard greens, fried cabbage, mashed potatoes, and macaroni and cheese, a choice of two. And I, yours truly, provided the dessert, which was the choice of banana pudding or Texas sheet cake, which I renamed McCullough sheet cake. And uh, everybody just had a wonderful time. Uh, Brandon and Stephanie, who you see with me a lot, and Parker came. They were there, and they helped us. And um, Leslie, I can't forget Leslie, the Alabama foodist, she was there. She provided just a little, um, like, appetizer. It was a jalapeno 
uh, cheese, like a cheese straw, but in a cookie form. And it was so good. It was amazing. And I can't tell you what all. We had soft drinks available. We had tea, Daisal coffee. They were there, provided coffee for everyone that wanted it through the meal or with their dessert. And um, we had people coming in and out. And it was just fun. It was fun. And I hope you'll go back and look at the video and just see it. And you can tell how much fun we had. And uh, we'll do it again in a few months. And uh, don't know what the theme will be. That'll be decided at that time. But uh, Pop Jones was there with me. And we had some drawings and gave out t-shirts. And um, I think everybody enjoyed it. I think everybody enjoyed it. I know we all did. So, but check out the video. And, uh, and if you haven't seen my last one, I did some braised greens and a sirloin. Y'all, let me tell you, those greens, they were absolutely delicious. I should have done some of those tonight, but I wanted asparagus. And uh, they were so easy and they come together so quick. You know how quick greens cook. And you start with a bunch like this and before you know it, they're down to this. There's nothing to it. You can take two cups and you come out with two ounces. And, uh, but they were delicious with a little bit of um, garlic and a little onion sauteed, green onion sauteed in it with it. And um, yeah, y'all need to try that. If you like greens at all, I use mustard greens, kale and baby spinach. I wanted some chard, but I couldn't find any. And it may just be the wrong time of year, uh, which I'm sure it is, but the store I was at didn't have it. And uh, you could use collard grains. You're just your choice of whatever grains you want to use. And But when I got to the store and that was the choices I saw, they had others, but that's what I wanted. But I'm so glad that's what I got. And y'all probably heard me say this before. Growing up, my grandmother, who I think was the greatest cook in the world, her and my mom, my mom, but she would take mustard grains, just raw mustard grains and put them in her dish. And she would chop up green onions, chip it up as she called it, chop up green onions and sprinkle on it. Well, then she'd fry salt pork, which I did, I copied her. I fried salt pork, took it out of the pan and that's what I braised my greens in. But she would take that grease and just pour it on those greens and just let them wilt like that. And then put that salt pork inside there. I didn't do that. Oh, yes, it, I can't say it's the healthiest dish, but uh, it was so good. But those braised greens that I did and the salt pork, it was very good. And it's healthy. I didn't have a couple of, ta I had to add oil actually to cook it. But y'all check out that video and you'll see how I did it. I want you to see how beautiful this chicken is coming along. And you know, it hadn't been cooking long. And I just turned up the heat a little bit. Our potatoes are boiling. Let's check them out. Yes. And I'm going to uncover them because I do not want them to boil over on my stove. I'm trying to get my whisk here because I think I just want to whip these up today instead of bringing out that old heavy mixer. You know, and it won't take these potatoes much longer and they'll be done. I got one stuck in there. He was trapped. I think I'm going to go ahead and put this asparagus in the oven. Get that going. And I'm going to set a timer. I've got it on uh, 400. And I'm going to set a timer for like 17 minutes. I'll come back and check it. Now, y'all know my oven cooks a little bit slower than others do. Everybody's oven stoves are different. The stove top, the two front eyes are really hot. 
and especially the one that I've got the potatoes on, it cooks real hot. And uh, I think now I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of this juice. You know, I wish I had some capers. I got thinking about that. That would be, but then we're gonna be making lemon piccata, right? Let's just, there we go. Mm. There we go. And I think I want to make a sauce with this. And to do that, I don't have any. Yo, excuse me. Watch the chicken while I go find some uh, chicken broth. Now, y'all didn't let it burn, did you? I may not do mine like most everybody does, but this is how I'm going to do it. And I'm going to use, get my measuring cup, and I'm going to use, I don't want it thick, but I want um, a little substance to it. I'm going to use about a tablespoon, teaspoon, it's kind of heaping, of some cornstarch. And then I'm going to mix it up with some of this chicken broth. Yeah, I'm doing it. Y'all know how I've told you to do it. See how the difference and how it pours. Let's stir that up. Now, you know, with cornstarch, you cannot mix it in the hot water or the hot pan because it will not mix in. You'll just get clumpy, lumpy mess. So let's leave that there for just a minute. I keep changing my mind what I want to do. I've got some roasted garlic base. Yeah, I bet that would be good in there, wouldn't it? Let's, um, we won't put much. That's a teaspoon. I think I'll only put like half a teaspoon. Y'all know this base stuff is delicious, but it's salty. Get in there and you can be cooking. That's cooking. We change our minds. We do things as we go along and say, hey, I think this would be good or that would be good. I'm cooking mine like this, but that doesn't mean that you might want to cook it and change up something. That would be fine. That's what I do. I look at recipes or I watch other YouTubers or cooking shows on TV and then I say, hey, I want to make that, but I want to do it my way. That's what we do. Mm. I am going to take this chicken up because I want it, I don't want it to dry out and I know it's done. Now here comes the fun part. Let's add this in the pan. If you could smell that garlic. Oh, that smells so good. Now what we'll do is take this pan sauce, this gravy, if you want to call it, and we'll pour a little bit over, spoon a little bit over our potatoes and over our chicken. Mmm. So I'm gonna let that simmer. I might have to add some more chicken broth to it. Um, and I know some of you are probably wondering, you see this spot on my face. I just had a dark spot that was on there removed. It was nothing to it. And um, I just, I didn't want it on my face. So uh, the dermat I had the dermatologist take it off. So, and I'm letting it heal. So I'm trying to keep it cleaned and protected and 
I don't want to get makeup in it and stuff like that. So, ooh. I think we need to taste this and see if we need to add anything. I doubt it's going to need any seasoning. Oh my goodness. I'm glad I put that garlic in there, y'all. I am going to put a little bit more chicken broth because it's getting thicker than I want. And I want it thinned out. I'm not making a gravy. I'm just making a sauce. If you could smell this. Can you see that sauce? Oh, yes, you can see good in that pan, can't you? Mm -mm -mm. Now, I want to cover this chicken with some foil because I want to keep it warm. But... I don't want to soak it. I don't want it simmering in that sauce. And I've got to go back to Sam's. I've got to go get some supplies. Do you use Sam's or Costco? Um, I like them both. We just, we've used both. And uh, our last choice was Sam's. And so we just kind of stuck with it. But, um... I like them both, but I like to go there for paper products and, or we'll order from Amazon a lot on paper products. And I don't know so much that it's really cheaper. It's just more convenient for us sometime to order it. But uh, yeah, paper products are expensive, aren't they? You go to the store to buy tissue or paper towels or uh, Kleenex, puffs, whichever brands you use. And uh, it's expensive. But I like to go to Sam's to get um, aluminum foil or paper plates when if I'm using paper plates, need them. And I buy my sugar and my confectioner sugar and brown sugar there because I can get it so much less at Sam's and butter. I can get butter uh, for a lot less than I can in the grocery store. And uh, I don't buy eggs there because I like the extra large eggs, but eggs are expensive. I went to Publix, and I don't know if there's Publix where you are. I know a lot of you are familiar with Publix. We'll be close to one. And I gave $7 and change for 18 eggs. I went to Piggly Wiggly, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. And it's just a little over $5 for 18. And these are extra large eggs. So I don't know why the difference but I know at Piggly Wiggly, it's cost plus 10, but it still comes out cheaper than uh, the other store. Let's check these potatoes again. <clears throat> oh my goodness, y'all. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, I think we can take these up. Now, I'm going to take them over here to the sink, and I'm going to drain them. And then I'm going to come back over here, and we're going to whip them up. And we're going to have supper ready here in just a minute. We get that asparagus out. And we get Pop Jones home. He'll be ready to eat. All right. And butter. Gotta have butter in the potatoes, right? And I just put a couple of tablespoons was all. And y'all know I do this. I'm gonna use buttermilk 
today and just whip it around use your whisk and just whip you get an upper arm workout if you're ready for some exercise i need an exercise program my goodness it didn't take much to mush up those potatoes let's stir in some some buttermilk <laughs> so I'm to get all up in my whisk come out of there these these are some pretty potatoes y'all let's whip them a little more I like my potatoes smooth. Do you like your potatoes like this smooth? Or do you like them a little lumpy? If they're a little lumpy, you know they're homemade. Because you can't get lumpy potatoes out of a package. Yes, that's perfect. Now, I'm a, I am going to add a little more milk. You make them as thick or as thin as you want. Mashed potatoes, whipped potatoes, have whatever you want to call them, creamed potatoes. Uh, they're that simple to make. Yeah, looky there, that beautiful pan of potatoes. See, they're steaming. Let's try them. I love potatoes. You guys have heard me say that before. If that was the only food on this earth, I'd be happy. Or if I'm on a stranded island and could have one thing to eat, it's going to be a potato. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep, that's perfect. It doesn't need anything else. Now I'm going to sit it back here. Let's look at the asparagus. Oh, it's coming along. It's got about five more minutes. And I think that's going to do it. Let's clean up our mess. I've got a sink of hot soapy water back here. And when I'm cooking, I usually keep a sink of hot water going. And, uh, oh, trust me, I use my dishwasher. But I can keep, throw some things. There's some things I don't put in the dishwasher, and I can throw them in there i'm gonna fix me a glass of tea y'all excuse me i'm thirsty <clears throat> i guess i've been talking too much i didn't turn on my ice maker today to make any ice i should have I don't know if you guys have checked into this ice maker I have. It's the High Cozy, H-I-C-O-Z-Y. And it's wonderful. It makes a little nugget ice. Oh, I love it. Mm. That's so refreshing. When you need something, let's see. And I put my spatula... in the sink and I was checking this to see if we need to add any more broth to it but I don't think so I want to leave it there and let it get done I want to show you these this asparagus when I get it out or I just quit rambling talking to you guys but I'm enjoying having you here with me I feel like every one of you or in my kitchen with me when I'm cooking and talking to you. So I enjoyed it. I wish Pop Jones was here. And uh, I know a lot of you, so many of you like to see him. And he enjoys seeing everyone as well. See, we're just in 35 minutes. I'm waiting on the asparagus to finish. And a lot of that has just been talking. <clears throat> 
I don't know where Miss Patchy went. She went outside earlier. She loves outside, y'all. Yeah. That kitty cat is spoiled rotten. I let her in. See, yesterday she was out and I got busy doing something and I went to the door and uh, I let it in and she stepped inside and looked up at me and started meowing and it's like she's fussing at me for not bringing her in. I want to show you something. I meant to show y'all this at the beginning. An amazing subscriber sent this to me today. And there's no such thing as too much butter. I think that's the truth. Terry Mentor sent that to me. Terry, I am so in love with this cloth already. And it's just too pretty to use, but we will use it. And uh, so I wanted to show y'all what she sent and tell you how show you how beautiful it is and tell terry how much i greatly appreciate it and it's so nice and so kind of you to think about me and she wrote me a nice little note with it and uh it's just beautiful so let's go check this asparagus it's about to go off Ooh. Yes. Had five seconds left. Looky there. Ooh. I love asparagus. I want to taste it. Hot. I like those little tips, those little fine tips there. That's my favorite part of it. Mmm. Y'all. Wow. I'm so glad I put some of this lemon pepper on it. Boy, did that make a difference. Pop Jones has got to get here so we can eat. I'm going to take a tiny little bite of this chicken. And then I'm going to let you good people go. Because y'all got to go fix your dinner. See how moist that chicken still is on the inside. Can you see that? <laughs> Got to dunk it. <laughs> mm, yo. Oh my goodness, guys. You have got to make this dinner. It's so quick. This chicken takes very little time to cook because it's thin and lightly bread it make this pan sauce and olive oil, salt, pepper, which I'll use salt and pepper, but it didn't use much and it did not come out salty. And I used the lemon pepper on it. Oh my goodness, y'all, this is so good. And the lemon pepper on this chicken just set it off. I appreciate each and every one of you for being with me today. And I hope you enjoyed this. And I want to try to do it more often. And hopefully in the future, I can come up with something quick and easy that we can cook live and we can do it together. That would be so much fun. But thanks for joining me. I appreciate each and every one of you. Like, share, subscribe. And I'll see each of you soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye.